Hey, this is Mrs. Wages. Sorry I couldn't be here in person to deliver these notes, but if you pay close attention to this video, pausing and rewinding is necessary, you'll get all the required information. Before we get started with the notes, let's make sure that your concentration practice number two is accurate. You should have just finished this worksheet, so pause the video right now, grab your worksheet, and check your answers as I review them with you. In this first example, we're looking at diffusion, which means we're talking about the solute moving through the cell. Now the worksheet began by telling you that there's a solute concentration inside of the cell of 99%, which means that the water concentration has to be only 1% inside of the cell. That should be labeled here. It also told you that outside of the cell, there's a water concentration of 75%, which means the solute could only have a concentration of 25% outside of the cell. That's recorded right over here. So if we know that diffusion moves solute from high to low concentration, then we can clearly see that solute concentration inside of the cell of 99% is greater than 25, and therefore the solute will move out of the cell. In example number two, which is also diffusion, and again talking about the solute moving, we see that inside of the cell, there's a concentration of 68% solute and 32% water. Outside is the same. So therefore, these areas are isotonic, or they're in equilibrium, which means the solute can pass freely back and forth, back and forth, maintaining equilibrium. Does your worksheet match my information on this video? This example illustrates osmosis, or the diffusion of water across the cell membrane. And remember that during osmosis, water is moving towards the hypertonic side in order to dilute and reach equilibrium. If you look at the numbers, inside of the cell there's a solute concentration of 58%. But outside it's only 35%, which means that water will move into the cell in order to reach equilibrium. In this last example, which is also osmosis, we'll see water diffusing across the cell membrane. And remember, during osmosis, water moves towards the hypertonic side. So looking inside compared to outside for solute concentration, it is clear that the solute has a higher concentration outside of the cell compared to inside, which means the outside is hypertonic. Therefore, osmosis will proceed as water moves out of the cell towards the hypertonic side in an attempt to reach equilibrium. Okay, it's time to get to the active transport notes. So just as you would do in class, fill out the information as I present them in the video. So at this point, grab your active transport notes and begin filling them in. Okay, remember that active means exactly the opposite of passive. In this case, in active transport, cells use energy trying to move substances to an area of higher concentration against the concentration gradient. The surface proteins which make active transport happen are often compared to pumps. Think about the energy you'd have to expend to pump water out of a well. Examples of these membrane pumps include a proton pump and also sodium potassium pumps. In either situation, energy is being used to move molecules against the concentration gradient. At this point, you should copy the following information on your worksheet. Label the phospholipid bilayer. Label the protein channel pump. The circles represent the solute particles, which are going to be using the pump to get through the cell membrane. The upper area is of low concentration. Its concentration is 0.05 grams per liter. The lower area is of higher concentration. Its concentration is 0.7 grams per liter. So stop right now, get them labeled, and predict which way these particles will be actively transported through the cell membrane. Please draw in this arrow of the solute moving down to the higher concentration area, but also add the fact that we're using ATP energy to make this action happen. Now these pumps are great for actively transporting particles if they're the right size, but sometimes even the pumps can be too small for larger substances. Therefore, cells need other methods for active transport. A different method of active transport is called endocytosis. Please say that to yourself, endocytosis. 
Endocytosis is the process by which a cell engulfs substances to bring them into the cell. And there's two different types of endocytosis processes. One type of endocytosis is called phagocytosis. This is the process of engulfing solid particles, like the cells eating something solid. Another type of endocytosis is called pinocytosis. This is the process of engulfing liquids. Think of the cell as drinking a liquid. Now occasionally cells need to get rid of particles as well, but this also takes energy. The reverse process of endocytosis is called exocytosis, and this is the process by which cells form vesicles on the inside. These vesicles join with the membrane and the contents leave the cell, they're exiting the cell, thus the name exocytosis. To review the information I just presented, I want you to watch another video by Teacher's Pet called Active Transport. The information is on the back of these notes. Watch the video and fill out the information as you go. The questions are on the back side. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.